Queen City versus the Queen City. And we have a uh, draw and a little bit of a scary moment for uh, one of those teams wearing the crown. And I think it's still going to be up to uh, us hosting Charlotte to figure out who really gets the rights this year as a little bit of an indecisive moment down in Charlotte as FC Cincinnati draw the other Queen City 1-1 with a late comeback. And uh, I've decided to have a great team here to talk about that and uh, well, exciting game this week as well. We have, uh, you're listening to Cincinnati Soccer Talk, a podcast that's been around since 2016. And uh, we've been here to cover your USL, MLS, and uh, everything else that's come along with it over the years. We appreciate you listening to us live or on the podcast in the next following week. Uh, I want to get into introducing my lovely cast of characters. First up, we will bring in uh, the man, the myth, Jeff Tabbitt's wearing all orange today. It looks like orange and black. What a bangle. How you doing, sir? You could only see me now. They'd be, they'd be disowning me. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm a Patriots fan, you know, through and through. So uh, they would be like, what are you doing to us? Um, but I do have the Red Sox cap in the back over there. So, hey, there's a little bit of the, the New England me still here. Uh, good to join you guys today. Um, yeah, and I hope you guys can all batten down your hatches just in case uh, uh, one of us flies away tomorrow. Yeah, I heard there. Actually, I, I was unaware of a huge storm. You guys informed me before the show. I believe our uh, next host believes he's superstitious. This one, he he said a storm hit him when he was a child, and now he, he's doomed and it's coming for him. Brian, can you please tell us your theory? Dude, man, like I literally was in like a first grade and third grade. And I think one year the storm knocked off our chimney. And then another time it took like nine or 12 trees and made a TP over our swing set. And our, my swing set, it was like four by four, like inch wooden trunks that my dad built that thing out of his bare hands. So, and, you know, I was in first grade, third grade, and now my kids are in first grade and third grade. So I'm like freaking out about a storm shelter down the basement. So. Pray for everybody's safety and, and 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 the wise words of Brian John Weigel telling all his drunk buddies back in 20, 2010 in North Carolina. Trust me, guys. If a tornado is about to hit your house, you'll know. <laughs> <laughs> we were at Martinsville Speedway that that day, and then came home, and a tornado literally was like three hundred yards from our house. <laughs> I appreciate that. I uh, I'm not in the mood for this. I paid to have a new roof installed on my house one week ago, so oh. uh, I really need it just to stay oh. battened down and everything fine. <laughs> this you can't get any newer than this roof over my head right now. All right, uh, we'll bring in Justin Blair back with us again. We appreciate you. How you doing? How was your Easter weekend, sir? Oh, it was great, man. All the Easter egg hunting and, uh, you know, running around. Um, we got family down in Richmond, Kentucky. So, you know, we went down there, stuffed our guts, and then hit the road immediately back to get ready for the work week. But That's, that's a great town. I love Richmond, man. Richmond's nice. Yeah, my mom and dad moved down there uh, not too uh, long ago. They used to live over near Bluegrass Airport. But it's uh, it's it's an amazing area, and being able to just kind of – sit back and watch the kids run around and watch the two-year-old try to, you know, swanton bomb off of the staircase about 300 times. Uh, it was a good holiday. <laughs> it's amazing how they stay alive, huh? It is. <laughs> They're very durable. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Well, I'm excited to get into this uh, show with you guys. Exciting week. We have, uh, of course, our show is sponsored by Apollo Home. If they could have built my roof, I would have called them. Uh, I tried, but they don't do that. So well, you know what they do do? Heating, tune-ups of your HVAC system, whole home plumbing evaluation, and electrical safety evaluations. All around $24 right now. Call uh, give, them a, give them a call or book online at ApolloHome.com. We appreciate them sponsoring us this 2024 season. Uh, they've been a longtime sponsor of CST, and they, uh, they they care. They care about local soccer media, so we appreciate that. As always, uh, CincinnatiSoccerTalk.com has been rocking this year. I got some of my fellow writers on the show, and uh, bo both of them, I believe, have uh, stories that have come out in the past week or two, so you can go check those out along with our weekly features. Uh, Nate Gilman, I believe, has a Corey Baird offensive feature coming this week. You will not want to miss, so... Uh, head over to CST and uh, check out check that out. Whenever your ears are done, you can feature eyeballs as well. 
All right, let's get in your best and worst. Justin, since you were late, we're going to start with you, see if you're prepared. <laughs> you got me. No, yeah. <laughs> My best was just like it's it's been a common theme now for about two years where I just feel pretty confident when we're in situations where, you know, our backs are against the rope that, you know, come on, you know, we're going to, we're going to find a way. We're just going to find a way. Lucho Acosta, you know, our defense, you know, especially our center backs, like when we're pressing so high up to go ch chase after a goal, uh, we have two of the center backs and Avina Nuovito is just going to come flying out of nowhere who really, I never have to worry about that second goal putting us out. So it just, it, it really like, it's fun to watch this team and it's been fun for a couple seasons, even when we're behind a goal. Uh, it, it's great to see us continue that kind of trend of finding a way. Uh, and then uh, worse for me was coach uh, going on vacation uh, this week and handing over the keys to the players rating. Oh, that's, a, that's am, a dangerous article. I, I'm <laughs> a fish out of water and I'm going to get hosed every, every inch of the way on this one. Cause I'm, I'm a vibes guy, man. Like man. coaches in the analytics, got the tech, you know, got the stats. I read the whole rule sheet. I was like, all half of these are going out this week. There's no way I can read this. So. I filled in for him one time. And what I've learned is if you don't judge them, like it, see, everybody's gotten time to get used to coaches ratings and coaches mm -hmm. style. A, a guy walked up to me before the game. And he's like, I never can catch your show, but I, I look forward every week to coaches player ratings. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Because the one time I filled in Justin, I got torn apart for not doing it. Like he does it. Like I'm supposed exactly. to be him. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is no coach. <laughs> there's no other coach. I mean, there, there's the one, the only. <laughs> Looks like Jeff agrees with me. I, I did it for him one time, and it, I used uh, a scoring method that was similar to someone on the internet that looked like him. And he's like, who the bleep and bleep is this? I don't I don't get this at all. And so I, I, got, I think I got chewed out just because, like, it doesn't make sense. It's not funny. But uh, <laughs> that's what makes it funny in the end. Yep. So yeah, coach loves to, I swear he loves to go on vacation and put one of us on the spot, but uh, it, it it's worth it. I think just for the uh, educational and it's, and it's a, uh, it's a, an article the fans look forward to at least. So thanks for pitching in and covering that. Jeff, you spoke up. We'll throw it to you next. Give me your best and worst on the week. All right. You know that I always love with starting with the worst, Mr. Pessimistic right here. Um, the, the worst you have to say is the opening 30 minutes of this game. The team was on their back foot for almost the entire first half. If it wasn't for a, the, the team finally starting to get their sea legs under them and, and fire some shots on, on goal, it felt better. But they were on their back foot. Oriano was occasionally out of space. And because of that, Kerwin Vargas came over and would always occupy that streak down the side, made all these crosses dangerous into the middle. If it wasn't for the likes of uh you know miazga and uh robinson just keeping a, a head on their a shoulder um th it could have easily been one nothing before halftime um the best i'm gonna say is the last 30 minutes uh say what you will about obina nobodo but when he comes in he is a, a galvanizing presence that he brings it th this this defensive mentality so that even if your your wingers are out of place if they're way up high He's able to sort of calm the middle down a little bit and and really make it so that that cross in the middle does not affect you. Um, and in the end, really, Charlotte were bringing on players who were DPs who um, were good, but there was a DP who really hadn't had too many minutes with the first team. And we had all of our subs that were dependable and in place. Um, the last formation with, with Lucho and Dado sort of being a double 10 in there really worked out. And that as much as people were talking about Yedlin's flick, that pass from Dado to uh, Santos, chef's kiss. Uh, I mean, the the end of this game is how the team should have looked for the first 60 minutes. I think what I liked about best about that is it finally was some teamwork play. You know, you didn't see a hero ball by uh, Bupenza or Baird or even Lucho. This was a combination goal and a great subs to make it happen, I think. All right, Brian, you're up next. Uh, my best for the week is is the result. Um, I, I really would have loved to have seen the head coaches duke it out in the sidelines, actually, but uh, I'll set it for a one one draw. Um, <laughs> no, overall, it's just got to keep keep that in mind. Three points at home and and a point on the road, regardless of, of how it comes. We we never play well on turf. 
um, in I thought we did okay. Uh, you have key contributions out of some some big players and guys that we've been yelling at to do something all year, like Sergio Santos. Um, you know, did the right move when he needed to. So uh, I still have a lot of faith in in the club and in the talent. Uh, but we still need to get better. Um, my worst of the week, man. Uh, I don't know. It's uh, I, I want to say Nikki Hags. Maybe I I just I, I kind of said that to everybody uh, on our Slack channel. I, I just didn't think he looked right last week, and putting him on turf this week versus a team that's very difficult to break down. Um, you know, is, is kind of setting the guy up for failure a little bit. The the one thing we'll say is that we've played a lot of annoying teams so far, and that that's going to kind of keep going into this weekend. I know Justin will talk about that later with, with Red Bull. It's, we played a lot of teams that just don't necessarily try to get on the ball. They're, they're, they just want to be pesky, foul, do a lot of off the ball stuff and, and credit. We still fought and, and, and we got a, we got a point. So I uh, want us to get better, but I, I think it's just, you know, looking at a lot of the stats, which we'll, we'll address here. I still think we're set up really, really well. You you brought it up, David Moore said Noonan from the top rope, boom. Uh, that that brings me into probably the most important question we will ask today, which is: out of all the MLS coaches, who are you picking to represent you in in, in a coach battle, uh, full on fight? You get to choose your fighter, and it can be any one of the uh, major league soccer coach. It has to be a head coach. That's the rule. Uh, can't go out there changing things. I, I'm going for Vinny. Oh, so I thought about that. Who? But he's crazy. I mean, he'll bring a knife to that fight. So, Who? Uh, Vinny uh, over at uh, uh, Vancouver FC. Vinny Sar- oh, Sartini. Yeah. Sarkini. That's it. Yeah. I I got to go with my my man Peter Vermees. I mean, he he drops f bombs on the on the sideline. It feels like he can rip off limbs and and you know club you over the head with it. He looks like the toughest guy out there, and mm. I wouldn't want to to mess with him. So I'd want him on my side. No Gary Smith. You know, he just put his hands up the whole time and defend. <laughs> he, he'd get hurt, too. Real, real easy. <laughs> oh, man. No, you can't pick Dom Kinnear. See, I know I know FC Cincinnati fans would want Dom representing them because the, guy, the guy's uh, scrappy, fun, and exciting. Brian, do you have a coach you'd pick? I mean, no, no doubt. I mean, Pat Noon, like, look at that dude rocking like the gold chain lately. He's like looking a little bit extra swole. I think the guys it, look. He looks like prize fighting shape. I think he's looking pretty solid. So we'll see. That that's my that's my cop out. You you want to have like post Philadelphia? What two years ago when he was you know picking fights with the assistant ref? You know, it's like oh that was professional, real professional. That's the type of Noonan you want. One that is like he drops, um, you know. Critic- criticisms in your face and requires people to hold him back. Yeah. If you don't know what we're talking about, apparently if you, you had to be paying attention right about the half halftime mark, uh, the other coach, I'm trying to remember his name. It's slipping my mind at the moment. Dean Smith. Smith. Yeah. And uh, Pat Noonan uh, exchanged words. Apparently he did not like that. Pat was uh, chatty with the referee and, uh, and felt like he was trying to change the game. And so they exchanged uh, some pretty nice words with each other. Pleasantries, I guess I could say. And uh, Pat and ended up coming out on top because he got his squad ready to go for the second half. So I guess if uh, you want to come at Pat right before the half, I'll welcome it now because now I know it works. So I'm excited about that. All right, we'll get uh, Brian. Oh, you, you just did your best Norris, right? All right, I'll dive into mine. I think the best it was seeing Obi out there for sure. I actually wasn't expecting him to come out in the second half. I was pretty pleased with that. I was pleased with the substitutions overall in the second half. Getting Pat, uh, getting Nick Hagland out of there when in, when we did, I think was a good call. I liked Ian Murphy coming in and uh, some fresh legs back there. Those halftime subs it hit me the right way. I've, I've been a big fan of the switcheroos right at the uh, forty-five minute mark. I think Pat Nunes done a great job with that this year. Worst, I didn't have too many. Uh, come, I guess, letting uh, dropping our lead for the first time. Um, FC Cincinnati still carries that like going into halftime pointless statistic, but uh, now they have trailed, I guess. So that's kind of a bummer. Let's look at some of yours. Go ahead. Didn't didn't they trail against Chicago? Did they? Yeah. All right. Well, I think they were down one nothing because of the uh, the penalty kick, and then they scored two goals to to win that game. 
No, you're right. All right, scrap scrap whatever I just said. Jose <laughs> best Yedlin for his coolness in the t- in the box to tap that ball for Pabenza. Worst Acosta who keeps holding on to the ball more than he should. Man, it's not very often we see uh, Lucho getting in the worst column. Best uh, Yedlin's flick to boop again, very popular. Worst it seemed. We kept wanting to go into the middle, but Charlotte was clogging. Yeah, I mean, when you play FC Cincinnati, that's the that's the, that's the go to move. Or Orciano and Hazley did not want to go down the sideline to spread the defense. Best, more points. Worst, Boop and Baird consistently finding ways to occupy the same space at the same time. Everybody's laughing at my pronunciation, by the way, if you're wondering. Uh, Eric Schmidt. The Yedlin flick, of course. Worst, continued promise uh, problems with finishing. So, overall, I think we're just noticing a trend here. We don't have to dive into too many more. Yedlin steals the show this week for sure. So Austin, let's talk about it. Austin, did it. you see that tackle in the box by Brett Hazley? That was incredible. <laughs> Let's I'll see. I'll see. <laughs> sprung, sprung the the. the... Just talking about me... the announcers. So they... No, Boston just. No, he's talking about me. Brett, but Brett uh, Hazley. It's uh, it's only been eighteen minutes. Give me another eighteen. I'll botch something else. <laughs> Orishano. Wow. Is that is that exactly how Orishano? He, no, he said Orishano, and it's Orishano. Uh, Carter Chapley also had mentioned that before. That you know, it, I guess it's common for Argentinian names to be Orishano in that situation. But he is Oriano. Like he he confirmed do, that do, is exactly how he wants to be pronounced. Stop confusing people, Justin. <laughs> it's it's Oriano. I, I don't believe you. <laughs> It's not. It's Orishano. Check yeah. the date. Check the date, guys. Check the date. Check the date, everybody. Get it right now and come after Justin. Go for it. <laughs> what date? He what just, are we doing? He just changed it again. I love it. No. I'm it's calling Oriano. it or- Orishano. Yeah, that's the official. I, I did see the official pronunciation dropped, and now every uh, MLS broadcaster switched to it. So. Oh, I'm I'm finding that tweet tonight and retweeting it. I, you best <laughs> believe it. Well, our fan base is already confused because if, if you got on Facebook or Twitter, everybody was fighting th- this fight uh, during the match as the as the uh, broadcaster kept saying it with an S. So kind of wild. All right, let's talk about the attack. The attack's been the focus of probably the last few shows, and we finally saw something different this week. Uh, Yedland, um, uh, Dado and Bupenza all linking up. And I think, it, is it encouraging to you guys to see uh, some kind of a link-up play? But keep in mind, this is late in the game, and it started with a sub off the bench. So do we still have big problems, or or are we moving in the right direction? Well, Whoever. I think, so I was kind of going over the stats today uh, because you know, it seems like the world's burning and everything with uh, with our attack, and we need to be not playing Corey Baird anymore and be putting Yakuba up top. Which I thought that was a interesting uh, substitution pattern late in the match. But um, a lot of our underlying numbers with the team might be slightly off this year. Uh, but some of them are even. I mean, I, I was really kind of looking at this with with Pavel and and Yuya and and Obi to see where we're we're having issues, but a, there's a lot more carries and a lot more of getting the ball forward out of these guys. What we're having issues with is basically we're having final, not even final third issues. It's penalty area issues. It's it's getting the right touches in the box. It's carrying the ball into dangerous situations. It's shot creating actions. You know, we're possessing the ball wildly uh, at a wildly higher clip this year. I think it's like 50 or 60 extra passes this year. Uh, per per ninety, we're, we're we're getting the opportunities. We're controlling the game more. But when it gets to that final third, we're running out of ideas or running into each other's own pathways, or or we're just not pulling the trigger. I mean, there's a chance that Lucho had, uh, I can't remember, it was like sixtieth minute where he could have just put a ball over the top to Bayard and let him run on a one v one situation. He just completely like held the ball and tried to get to Orishano. And uh, I I just. I feel like we're still struggling to get Lucho in the right spots. And then when he gets in that position, it's, you know, we're, we're, we're not, you know, Bupenza is like two or three touches less per game in those dangerous spots. 
And it's just, it's kind of confusing me. I can't wait to see what Nate's going to put out in his story. But I mean, at the end of the day, um, these guys are high pay players and, and we got to figure it out. I mean, we're, what Jeffrey said, we, we really aren't that far off on our pace from last year. No, not at all. I mean, you take a look at really the results that we've, we've had. I mean, three wins, three draws. Very good. At this point last season, we were four wins, two draws. Um, I believe this year we've got six goals, three against, plus three uh, goal differential. Last year it was eight and four for a plus four differential. There's not much of a difference. I think what we're seeing is that, especially out, the, the, the worrisome thing is that we're against teams that we should be, I think, bringing our A games to. Um, you know, DC United on paper weren't supposed to be that great. Zero, zero draw at home. Same thing with Toronto. Same thing with uh, New York City. That that was a sort of a, an unimpressive one nothing victory. We should be pulling out the heavy artillery. And yet, when you look at the shots that we took against Charlotte, they all seem to come from the same spot, like at the top of the 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 eighteen yard box, and they're all coming straight at the, the goalkeeper. It, I think we need to sort of try to venture out from the sides a little bit and and see if we can get uh, rebounds instead of depending on a ball to go past the goalie. We're we're really not approaching from the sides, guys. Saying the yeah. crosses and things like that. I mean, it's hard to say because like I'm looking at the shot, the shot chart um, from whoscored.com and all of them are coming straight at the goalie. There's nothing coming from the sides. There's nothing depending on a, a save from the goalkeeper and then popped in. Um, it, it feels like we're just w one note going forward and then trying something in front of the goalkeeper instead of trying to get to his sides and depending on messes in the middle to clean up. That goal that we scored was because there was a mess from the side. Mm -hmm. And and so we need just, I think we need to be a little less uh, expecting. Perfect? Trying feel, to be perfect? No, I'm not trying to be perfect. I'm just saying you need to spread things out a little bit. You can't be coming from one direction all the time. I think it's interesting because if you go around the league and listen to other, other clubs' podcasts and other team sources, most fans complain about too much from the wings. <laughs> We're one of these weird teams that is like, why are we always trying to go through the middle all the time? <laughs> but it, I mean, it, it did, that did work for us last year, but we also had Barrial, you know, giving us a really good left foot from the side. And you know, Luca just see, doesn't I mean, have it yet. Crosses. Per 90, we're averaging 12 and a half versus 13 and a half last year. Crosses from where? Is, is this? Uh, I, mean, I mean, the, the crosses. Sometimes Alvaro, can... Alvaro brought seven of those per 90. So, I mean, he definitely worked the ball out a lot more. Mm -hmm. But you kind of have a little trade off. And Lucho's, for some reason, Lucho right now is near that seven. And Luca's at like 4.7. It, it felt like there were a few times during That's, the game when when Lucha was dang. where Barrial would be and yeah. Luca was in the middle where uh, Lucha would yeah. be. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, right now, um, Lucho, Lucho's averaging 5.82 crosses per 90. And last year he did 2.8. But there's a, there's a trade off there where um, the amount of progressive carries that Luca had is like, wildly higher than yeah. what 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 Alvaro Barriel had last year. I got to find that stat. But. He's he's definitely venturing into the middle more than I mean maybe I'm imagining it, but it looks like he's venturing more into the middle than than Barriel had been. No, I think I think part, he's definitely part, assisting. Particularly in this past match, I think you're right. I think he was playing like particularly like there in the second half. Yeah. He was almost playing the 10 position, like Jeff said. Yeah, I felt like when things get jammed up, he's starting to come back and and help uh, get things moving again, which is nice because our, our, most of our forward line uh, gets a little stagnant and stops moving. Uh, did one of you guys already mention this? I, I saw it in uh, our CST discussions this week that Boop is two shots under his average last year. Yeah, he's he's getting uh, two or few two fewer shot creating actions, uh, and it's kind of what Brad and I were saying. Is I feel like and this might be to your guys' point where we may be bringing it from the side and let him run in 
run in on the ball. Whereas like, I feel like this year we're just trying to pass to him at the damn top of the box and say, Hey, just take a crack at it. I I could be way off there. And I hope Nate proves me wrong or right. either way. I think, I think that was like our trouble at the beginning of the season, right? We would enter the box and the touches weren't very good uh, from both Bupenza and from Corey Baird. So I think in the last few matches I've seen us, we, we have shifted a bit to playing a little bit. We're having a hard time entering the box now because almost everything is coming from outside of the box and trying to find, you know, just these outside shots or trying to get creation. Uh, we're definitely having more issues crazy. getting into the penalty area. Yes. Yes. We're, we're yeah. still getting the ball into the, the, the final third at a, a very, 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 very time. successful. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, we we a lot better. That was kind of our problem, and like the reverse problem from 2022 was we had no problem once we were at the box. It was just getting the ball from midfield into that area that was a struggle. This year is the complete opposite. I just don't think that we have potent enough uh, possessors of the ball in the box to be able to uh, to navigate the traffic. Like Kevin's point here, he said, didn't we have a lot of uh, two, one, one, nothing games to start last year? Not to beat a dead horse, but we have a new uh, left, what, left wing back, an average striker and Baird and a new uh, CDM starting. This leads me to believe that's why Acosta is playing hero ball like in 2021. He's trying to carry the team instead of believing in his teammates. Also, again, we don't seem to be uh, taking the ball down the left touch line like Barrow would to create space. Yeah, we did have a lot of uh, one nothing games last year i think we were a little more okay with it because we were still trying to grow into the expectations and and we were also getting these one nothing games uh, against teams that were great teams i mean houston 2-1 at home uh seattle one nothing at home those were games that really we could have flipped a coin and and you know the other team could have taken advantage of it this year we're, we're playing against teams where last year they were pretty low on on the um uh on the table. table. Yeah. And we're, we also haven't played any teams from the West. So we're, we're fair, Houston wasn't high on the table going into last year's first game. Very true. Like very true. From the year before. Um, I don't know guys. Like there's been a lot of talk about ben- benching Baird and hoping this new kid comes in and target strikers. I, I don't know. We're necessarily built for, you know, the crossing game, like what we saw with Monterey and Vasquez, but I do think having somebody that offers maybe an alternative to what Baird, what Baird is. I mean, we're, we're kind of playing them in a withdrawn role now. And, and I just, I, I I just don't feel like there's a click click with, uh, with, with Lucha. I'd almost rather have, you know, Lucha pick up his head and have the two options in front of him versus, you know, necessarily trying to only circle Bupenza. Yeah, no, I, I, think, I, I agree with that. I think uh, it takes time, man. I so, mean, what, yeah, you, you have you have yeah. to have these guys get on the same page. You yeah. can't just look for a change. Uh, you know, what are we like six games into the year? So, yeah, I'm but, really but, upset because I can't find the darn stat. But I think they only gave us like four crosses on on the weekend, and there was like three within like 15 seconds of one another. <laughs> it, they, I think some of the crosses looked like they were a little deeper than than you know right outside the box um i think or or luca hit a few that were could be counted as crosses but they were pretty deep crosses um but but i mean regardless i i look at the past and i see if we can repeat the past then i feel pretty good um the first six games first eight games of the season we didn't have brenner we didn't have that that second striker to really uh, gel with you know, uh, Vasquez there, we had to depend on Santos. We had to depend on, um, you know, Don Baji. And so we're sort of in a similar situation right now. It's, it's quite possible that whoever comes on the horizon, if we have spot for, um, a dependable striker, uh, to set up with a Bupenza, um, and then Baird comes off the bench and becomes your Don Baji, then, you know, the solution is there. But right now I think we're doing okay. We're, we're still on the pace that we we're at last year. By the way, this is the second most amount of passes in the, into the penalty area, penalty area that we've had all season. Ten is, was this weekend. We, there was twelve versus DC United. We didn't even score in that match. Yeah, 
getting harder and harder to get defensively. I, I don't know about you guys, but it's kind of weird for me watching FC Cincinnati and seeing all the, all the action, the plays that get your heart upbeat and racing coming down Yedlin's side versus uh, it always was Mario's side. It's, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm having to ch- change my neck direction when I'm at the home stadium, uh, yeah. how I'm looking at the field. He's more dynamic than Pal and Gaddis. I will say that. <laughs> it, it didn't make me feel good when I think the announcer said he has never scored a goal in MLS, Yedlin. I was like, oh. It's been 11 years. 11, 11, 11 years. years. I'm like, mm-hmm. 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 Okay. But neither did Pal or Gaddis. Like, we're not, we're, we're not, no one in FCC lands expecting goals to come down that side. Uh, actually, Pal finally did, didn't he? Uh, first game. That wasn't even an MLS game. <laughs> no, it was. <laughs> It was Cavalier, wasn't it? It was Down Cavalier. In, or up here, up here. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that's funny. All right, uh, let's get into our second half sponsor real quick. We want to give a shout out to uh, Beyond Exercise, the local physical therapy and fitness a business that helps anyone get active and stay active. In fact, they've helped Nick Haglin and Brandon Vasquez with their physical therapy and strength training needs during the offseason. Ask the fellows at Beyond about the ACL injury prevention screen which was piloted with nick and brandon learn more at go beyond exercise.com well we can uh we can keep talking about the attack i know that the fc cincinnati fans are wondering the same questions is help on the way possibly uh, there's got to be some credibility to all the rumors flowing around I, I don't know if chris albright is heavily tasked with filling a void i think really at the end of the day pat noonan just wants options he wants a way to uh, dig and find something that works. Anybody surprised by Nick Haglin starting? I was. That's my worst, bud. So y'all can answer that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I, it wasn't a surprise to me because I had to watch the replay uh, after my travels. But <laughs> yeah, um, it, 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 I guess it was kind of weird that he started, but. I mean, let let the other guys. The other guys have been putting in a lot of shifts lately. Yeah. Uh, given the situation, playing against, uh, you know, Charlotte's not like necessarily beat your chest, best scoring machine in the league. So, um, you know, get him kind of comfortable, get him acclimated to what uh, we're what we got with Miles Robinson now and with Miazga. So I, and then you know, if anything, you can bring on your subs like Murphy did in the second half. So I wasn't com- terribly shocked that he got some minutes. Well, uh, Nick Hagelin is a coach of the club I play uh, this weekend, so boo him right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, where's he going with this? Okay. He has time to coach another team? Allegedly. Wow. That's impressive. Well, he might be getting some more action in FCC land. We see him come off the bench. Now we see him start. So I think the Pat Noonan rotations going strong. Uh, I'm not sure. I would imagine, though, your starting three are um, Robinson, Miazga, and Murphy. I would imagine. Kip Keller. Got some time, but but he he didn't even make the field this week. So I don't yeah, know. I'm I'm kind of surprised that we we started Hagland and Robinson. To be honest, I'm part of me was like the reason that Robinson wanted to, or at least from what people say that the reason That's Robinson answer. wanted to play here is because he didn't want to play on turf. And so what do you do? Uh, he plays on turf. So I'm like. I think we did pretty good this weekend to get out of uh, Carolina after the injuries that had happened the week before with Columbus. They lost, I think, two guys in the first yeah. half. And then uh, Charlotte, I think, lost a, a guy of their own in the first half. So I, I just hope the turf monster doesn't eat uh, Robinson alive. And lo and behold, we sort of lucked out, I think. Well, we spent way too long talking about it on the show last week and turned out to be nothing because no one got hurt. But I'm glad. I'm glad it was just a wasted segment. I'd rather have that happen than anything bad. Uh, Kubo, eventful game for Kubo. He starts out a little bit more towards the defensive side of things. He moves towards the attack, but also picks up a penalty kick, which uh, could have been the reason FCC didn't walk out of here with the win. Uh, how bad was the the foul? Did you get? To, did you catch it, Jeff? I I looked at the foul and by the way, well, the way that Kubo reacted, he he was like, no, 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 this wasn't a foul. You see him look, you see him look up and he's like, no, no, that's showing me that it's not a foul. 
And it looked to me like it was more of a challenge. And then feet sort of tangled with each other. It wasn't a play where Kubo strictly stepped on someone's foot or kicked someone's foot or shoved someone. It was more like a tangle than anything. And so when they call the penalty, I'm sort of like, mm, you know what? If the replacement referees were here, you could have seen it and not called at all. But then I also looked at the referees that came in. I'm like, you guys probably shouldn't have called that either. So I, I don't know. I mean, I think it was a 50-50 play. I would have said play on. Um, if you use the Pruder film the damn thing and you like go frame <laughs> by frame, you literally see the guy clench you know, half second before you Kubo even gets there. And what there's, there's definitely contact made, but I think if the guy wasn't already going down like a bag of bricks, uh, that, that play could have ended a little bit differently. And, and, and I mean, to be fair, that's kind of what you want your forwards to do sometimes. Um, uh, I take bigger issue with some of the other non calls, uh, um, in the match, you know, more, more specifically, the two times Penza got like ripped down by this face or an elbow to the head and nothing. And then two seconds later, you call a foul on Acosta outside our penalty area and he didn't do anything. And, and like, I'm, you know, I've been banging the horn about the, 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 the refs coming back and we need professional refs. And, and yes, so there was less VAR. There was higher accuracy in calls There there really was like, if you look at the stats and you can find it, there were better calls across the board, but I'm going to hold these guys to a higher standard. And I think some of this stuff was just, was it a flat out joke. And I mean, did he get conned into that penalty? I think, you'll, I think a little bit there. And, and we all know the damn conspiracies and everything, which is freaking true that, you know, they're going to protect their refs because they want them to look good. So they're not going to call that the VAR and they're not going to actually analyze what the hell's happening. So it's just, it's a shame. I'm already pissed off about the refs this year. And uh, you know what? Screw you guys. I backed you up to get your raises. And you still got less money for your ARs. What a crock of crap, you center left <laughs> jerks. Oh, please clip that and use that. In, in our- Dude. Oh, we got to protect our, our pores. We got to protect our ARs. Yeah, they got they got like decent. Like they had you know, 15, 20,000, which had nothing to sneeze at. But come on. You guys, you went for yourselves, Ted Uncle, you selfish B word. <laughs> I can. I like this, Brian. This fired up, Brian. I disagree with you, although I think <laughs> I, I think it was a. Uh, oh, I, I disagree. Was, I think it was a pretty blatant uh, foul went in on the foot, so it's going to get called nine times out of ten. That's why I wouldn't. That's why I won't get overturned. It so. was shin to shin. What foot are you talking about? <laughs> it was tang- They were tangling feet with each other. I, don't, I, I wouldn't have called that. I don't. I don't think he should. You, you can't reverse it once it's called. That's what I'm saying. In slow sure motion, it looked bad. Sure, you, you are. are. You can absolutely bar it. I just don't think it would have been overturned, even if they went to the monitor. Who I don't think paid you, sh- you off. Who paid you <laughs> off? Did we get a new sponsor this week? Let's see. Yeah, it is. It's pro referees did sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> Boston's the one media member in Cincinnati that hasn't been shadow banned or banned in, by him. in the bag. He's in the bag <laughs> for him. No. I, I don't know. I think we just need to hold these guys to higher standard. And, and yeah, there's there's contact there and. I mean, if, it, if if the rules are reversed, I would have been like, hey, call the damn thing. But, I mean, they, they just didn't call equally the whole night in terms of, you know, contact and everything. Yeah, I mean, there, I think there was some horrendous no calls on both sides, though. Just kind of like what we saw in the New York game. Um, but, yeah, you're right. I mean, for me, Kubo shouldn't have been caught flat-footed in that situation. It was kind of a lapse in attention for him. And then, uh, yeah, that that one where Bupinza got <laughs> that guy like j- jumped into the Vargas. air and like slapped him in the face and stuff Vargas. like that in the box. I was like, what? <laughs> no call. He did go down kind of soft on that. Like if he could have just like reacted with his head back instead of just fully laying out, then I think they may have called that. Yeah, we sent but we sent Justin down to Lexington, and Louisville. Now he's become impartial all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> no way, man. No He's going to start preaching speak. at us about the truths of USL Pro Rail pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> Brian has left the chat. <laughs> no, 
No, Jason, thank you. If you do, we're going to just sit Jason on you. <laughs> you guys will just have a battle for to, to last lock, the ages. Lock us in the closet. Let us yeah. fight it out. Let's go. <laughs> if you guys think uh, officiating was uh, bad, do you think simulation was bad this week? Guess Have you looked at the calendar? Have you turned the page yet to see who's oh, yeah. coming down the pike? Mm-hmm. And a, a fourth place, playing pretty well, actually. New York Red Bulls is on the horizon. So we're about to figure out what we are made of. What stuffing is in the FC Cincinnati Tuddy Bear? Because uh, I... <laughs> Brian, why are you looking at me like... What? That's, a, that's still a great... <laughs> flammable. That's what I want. Flammable. I want us to just freaking explode on these boogers this weekend. Yeah, it's going to be it? it's going to be a tough one. I think I think we're going to find out whether we're the real deal or that we need to go back to the drawing board. Six, At home. 6 games in, it's still way too early. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we're sitting in freaking spanked, first place in the east. But you're here's here's you guys brought it up earlier and I'm just going to drill down on it because we have played probably the easiest schedule, in my opinion, out of any team in the Eastern Conference. I think we had the cakewalk entry to the season. If you if you, if you put aside uh, the CCL games, we we walked in here playing pretty pretty easy games. You can't put aside the CCC games though. That's that's still you know traveling you know and then playing a game two days afterwards. You you can't set those aside and say, well, it was going to be a pretty easy. Schedule. Uh, they're, they're all going to be difficult games because they're playing four more games than they need to play. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to this next few. You got uh, New York, Montreal, Atlanta, and then we, to your credit, we finally get our first Western Conference game over in Colorado. So uh, we'll we'll find out here pretty soon. Which is wild on. because last year, like we had five Western Conference games by now. So, like, it is pretty wild that we haven't ran into one of them. Like, we we started to see Houston, Portland, Seattle. Like, I mean, we went right down the list. I think our last one was against Vancouver, and that was before, like, the first third of the season was over. Now, what's up with the fact we don't get to play Seattle the year they're absolute garbage? <laughs> <laughs> it's not even fair. I'm going to go talk to the schedule makers here. But uh, all right, uh, Justin, you've been traveling around. We just briefly mentioned it. Can you tell us where you've gone, what you've covered, why you're doing what you're doing? It's it's the Justin segment show. Yeah, so I've I kind of had a quirky idea. I was playing around on our website and I saw we covered King's Hammer, Dayton Dutch Lions in the past. And I was like, hey, you know. I'd like to cover some of those teams, but like, do I want to do it week by week? Probably not. I'd, I'd like to, <laughs> I'd like to go down and experience what that game at day atmosphere looks like. You know, I see, especially with the USL teams, I get a chance to see them on TV and I've, I've always wondered, okay, like what is Lynn family stadium in Louisville look like? Uh, so it, it's, it's been a lot of fun. I mean, even covering, uh, we covered queen city, football club uh, a, a men's 5v5 um sunday league um it, it it's it's just been a blast because the the meeting new people new faces new atmosphere it kind of reminds me of covering college collegiate basketball and football because it's you just kind of stumble into a random town in the south and it's like hey you know like we we also like basketball here and it's same with soccer it's like you know hey we're we're just like it's just a little hole in the wall on the whole grand scheme of world soccer. But, you know, in that moment, in that stadium, it, it's, it's it's special to see the families, the communities and all that kind of get together. Yeah, I really enjoyed reading it. If you if you don't know what we're speaking of, check out Justin's series on our website where he's kind of bounced around. I think uh, Indian Indy 11 was the last of the latest edition, which just came out a couple days ago. Pretty cool. Do you approach it like uh, so do you, you're for FC Cincinnati? You sit up in the box a lot. You're your official all pro journalist. Yada, yada, yada. Do you do you go into those matches with that kind of viewpoint? Or are you going in as a fan? Do you want to jump around in the supporter section? <laughs> a little bit of both I, I like like obviously when i'm covering fc cincinnati you know i'm I'm up there pretty early and then i'm you know there the entire time you know i might poke out at halftime you know but I, i'm covering the match uh for there I, 
it, it's all new to me. So I, I'm going around, I'm checking out the team store. I'm going up, you know, maybe sitting down in the bleachers for a five minute period, going back up into the box. The kind of, and the cool thing about those places is, is that the comm staff really are welcome to, to have us cover their team, right? They, they do, they jump through hoops for us to be able to, uh, um, cover them you know hey we'll give you a parking pass here hey you know whatever you need you need us to get you some photos we we can get our cameraman to take a couple pictures it's been fantastic and that's that's what local small you know small town soccer is all about right it's just everybody working together this whole synergy in that building but uh yeah I, i kind of uh kind of i don't wouldn't say kick my feet up but i definitely am trying to soak in the atmosphere more than the match Great. Yeah. I miss, I miss some of the small little things I used to, you spoke of Cincinnati Dutch lands. I used to go out weekly bi-weekly and cover that team. And uh, there are, there are weeks I wish I was uh, just running around. You know, the cool thing about those venues is you know, maybe not USL championship, but when you get low enough, you have full access to everything. You want to walk on the field at halftime? Go ahead. No one's going to yell at you, but uh, you kind of can do whatever you want. Okay. So I want to see Boston do the game ball delivery. <laughs> <from the front. laughs> Smack it out of a little kid's hands and take it, take charge. <laughs> but yeah, um, so there, there are a few um, things that I'm like planning out ahead of time. I know in June I'll be up covering Dayton Dutch Lions. Mm. Uh, I'm definitely catching a King's Hammer game here in the next couple months. Uh, I've also flirted with the idea of getting some collegiate teams uh, because there's plenty of good collegiate soccer in our area. Uh, It's just to kind of give our readers and our fans a little taste of what a Saturday, a Sunday looks like in some of these venues, especially some of the lower uh, league teams, the 5v5s and stuff like that. Well, we appreciate it. Uh, looking ahead, we like we spoke a second ago, we do have New York coming to town. And uh, Jeff, you probably know best about some of these heated games, these rivalry games. Is this a rivalry at this point? Frankie and Maya and all I, that comes I, with it. I think just the fact that we played five games against them last year, it's, yeah, it it's got to be a rival. It's got to be a rivalry game. We I knocked mean, them out of the playoffs again. There's that's the thing. We've knocked them out twice. We've, but they, of course, they knocked us out first, right? That back in 2017, back in 2018, when the baby bulls knocked us out of the USL playoffs. So there is a rivalry there. I mean, people will not want to talk about the likes of, uh, you know, Frankie going there and, mm. and not saying not saying goodbye when he did, but also the, the whole and he's doing it right up there. The heart marks, um, you know, Matt Miazga burned his bridge. Uh, oh, that was for, that game. He used to play for them. And now it, he's basically public enemy number one. If you talk to a Red Bull fan. So, yes, there is a rivalry. There's a much bigger rivalry between dare I say it. It's I think it's a bigger rivalry between us and Red Bulls than us and Columbus. What? Right now. Right <laughs> now. Sorry, I took myself on mute for that. Yes. Yeah. Right now. I, I mean, also, remember Maybe. who you're talking? Remember who you're talking to? It's you're more talking, back and forth. You're talking to a Red Sox fan, so I hate New York with a passion to begin with. I, um, <laughs> I mean, no, I, no I, I can kind of I can kind of see what he's talking about. I mean, it, it like like it's there's a difference between the regionality rivalry, right? The kind of quirky we're next to them. Like, I don't think we're like quite like FC Cincinnati, Nashville, where it's just like, yeah, these two teams are close. They're rivals now. Uh, but um, having that rival with Columbus is, is a bit different, right? I mean, there's a good chunk of this fan base that were Columbus crew fans. Um, so, that it's kind of an awkward rivalry for some fans in our in FC Cincinnati, but you know, we all love hell is real. It's an amazing atmosphere, but there's something about these Red Bull games that do bring out like to just like foaming at the mouth hatred from the fan bases. And I, I think that's about as organic of a rivalry as you can possibly find when you are, like, I hate watching this team. I hate, I hope they lose every one of their matches. I know we have that with Columbus, but I'm starting to get that way. Uh, that that tw- that 2022 game, 
like really like nailed that home to me when when we saw John Token flop in the box, and then later the smallest man on the pitch, Lucho Acosta, becomes our second player of the match to get a red card from that headfoot on Aaron Long. Like I just really hate the Red Bulls. I hate the way they play the game, and uh, I know it's changed a bit this year, but it's like it, it's up there for me. Let's John, hear it, Brian. Does John Tolkien even start for them anymore? He didn't start this weekend. He didn't start this weekend from an injury, or oh, okay. or, or no, he was on uh, the he was on uh, the the US seven, yeah, the youth yeah. team. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Preparing yeah. for the Olympics. I mean, I, I don't I don't think I would go as far to this far to say that uh they're a bigger rival than Columbus because I don't think there is that, but maybe I detest their playing style more than than any other team. That might be a better I'll, I'll way give to you play. that. Yeah, yeah. Um I, I think we when when we see when we see Columbus play, I think we can embrace what Wolf Nancy has brought to that team that he is a, an exceptional coach. You can give him that. You can, you can say that um, Cucho Hernandez is an incredible player. You can give respect to Darlington Nagby. Um, but when it comes to the players on the pitch, you can't help but boo at a Red Bulls team. Cool. Well, I'm, I'm just excited we have a rivalry that we're, we have the front leg on. <laughs> so I was going to make a funny um, uh, a post on social media today for April Fool's Day, and it was going to be, uh, you know, a, a, an image basically shouting out that, hey, we're going to be changing the starting tab. We've been flexed out of our standard starting time for the Saturday's game, and we will now be playing Saturday at four o'clock and and weirdly enough we were flexed to CBS so and I was gonna put up an image of FCC and the USL days and then New York Ripples too. I think I thought it'd be pretty funny, but I just didn't really want to piss off all the people Justin was hanging out with in Indianapolis and Louisville. So I did that for you, Justin. Appreciate you. Yeah. They're supposed they're supposed to have their biggest game of the of the year this this weekend, you know, in the yeah. eleven and Lou City playing against I, I on still, CBS. I still just won't believe that's it's, any anything as good as what Louisville Cincinnati was. I'm I'm happy to convince me otherwise. No. I'm happy for them. But once people realize that it's not the same league as Messi, they're just going to turn like there's it's going to draw zero casual fans. <laughs> I, I think I think I think Louisville. Well, I, I, I just like God, I love the people in, in the 11. It was great. But their club has some ways to go, some maturing to do. So are you talking uh, about the same club that played all their games in Lucas Oil Stadium and then the owner pulled all their funding? Yes. Yeah, got a, they got a fancy new stadium coming though. Yeah. I remember when the USL was going. To... Yeah, yeah. I the think only this... reason why that guy's building that stadium is because he gets to build everything around the it. hotels. Yeah. The, the only reason. Why. Yeah, it's amazing though. Well, well, that's where the billion really. It. That's where the billion really is going. Yeah. It's not a billion dollar stadium. It's the development. I, det- I detest that owner. I detest him so much. What's his name? Jim Erste? No, dude, that is uh, Edmil Erzdal. Yeah. Edmil Erzdal. All right. Well, uh, we do look forward to that match. Look forward to seeing you guys out there if you're there. I I do like the schedule this year. It's been a little bit of back and forth, so I feel like I'm not at the stadium every week. I feel like I'm not watching it on TV every week, so kind of cool. My brother is coming into town for the Eclipse, so I get to take him to an FC Cincinnati match probably um my cool final thought of the night and i'm excited about that him and a, a buddy uh, that we hang out with is like coming up so be fun weekend for me not so much for my wife because she's gonna have three guys in her house running around joking about really stupid shit probably but uh that's just how it's gonna go all right so let's get into your final thoughts um brian weigel you're up oh i don't know i don't really have any final thoughts uh, I just hope we get to bring somebody in. I guess I'm. I kind of got excited hearing about this kid that's over in in. Is it Ukraine? Where is that? Shock playing in Shock Yeah. So yep. uh, that excites Ke- me. That Kevin excites Kelsey. me. Yeah, it just excites me that we're looking at some some guys like that. I mean, they might not be completely on the radar guys, but um, they're still guys that are going to have to take a, a significant chunk of change to to bring him over here. And uh, so, yeah, just keep, keep, keep going all bright and uh, 
give us some more options, man. Justin. Uh, big shout out to Valhalla FC for uh, giving me the details on a 5v5 uh, soccer bonanza up in Fairfield this uh, coming up in the next couple weeks. Uh, it's April 12th through the 14th. It's 5v5 indoor soccer, and it's got a couple of the re- uh, local teams like Valhalla FC, uh, the, the women's side, Cincinnati Sirens, and then, of course, uh, Northern Kentucky is competing in it too. But it's, I mean, it's teams from all over the country that are coming to little Fairfield, Ohio to uh, play this awesome tournament. I can't wait to get down there and hopefully cover some of those matches. Well, I'll meet some Cincinnati Sirens. Covered them a few times over the years. Uh, I might be interested to go. Tell me a little bit more about that off-air. Uh, well, um, Jeff. Well, that's that's actually a pretty good uh, overlap because Valhalla FC, I think, was one of the teams that was competing to get into the U.S. Open Cup this year, and they just missed it. I think they lost to a really good Chicago house team. And and that's the thing I, I want to end uh, the day on. The U.S. Open Cup starts up second round. I'm excited to see some of these games coming up. I mean, you have Central Valley Fuego, um, coached by Jermaine Jones, uh, and they're taking on El Farolito, which is an amateur team that is basically a, centered around a restaurant. And not only are they centered around a restaurant, I dove a little bit more into this. This was the last amateur team to win the U.S. Open Cup. Um, they were like C, uh, CD Mexico, I think, or something like that. And so there's a little bit of history just trying to make its way up the U.S. Open Cup ladder. There's some other great games that are going to show up. Vermont Green. Let's go, Vermont Ooh. Green. Go they Carolina take on, Core. Go they Carolina take on the Core. Carolina Core. Um, go and Carolina then, Core. <laughs> what are the other ones? U.S. Uh, I'm sorry. Union Omaha and Des Moines Menace. Um, yeah. Of, yeah. Of all the of all the people, uh, uh, Sasha. Uh, Ah, I forget his last name. Baron Sasha Question. Sasha Question. Thank you. I, I pulled Baron Boston. Cohen. Down. He he joined the team and basically played 120 minutes for them. Uh, got one of the uh, the, the, the assists. Gimmick. It's a gimmick, but it gets I get it got my eyeballs on the game. So mm-hmm. I I'm hoping that some people can can tune in and watch some more of these games before the other USL teams uh, join and before the other MLS teams join. Uh, so that's where I'm going to be. All right. I want to thank all of our uh, Patreon supporters who uh, keep CST active. Big shout out to Anthony Houston, who joined uh, up this week. And so we want to uh, give Anthony a shout out. Thanks and, and welcome. We hope you're enjoying the uh, Growler Cup. If you haven't joined, we just threw the next five matches. Uh, we published those on our Patreon pages. So you can uh, sign up and play a little game with us on uh, who will win, lose, or draw. Get points for um, either team's score that you get correct, and three points if you can guess the the uh, W L D uh, on the score sheet. So overall, a lot of fun there. Uh, trying to remember who's uh, who's got that thing in the bag right now, but uh, it's definitely not in the bag. I think I'm Tom, getting, Tom Newhouse. I think's in the lead. I'm getting the wooden spoon surely. Yeah, yeah. I'm not doing too hot myself. I had one one amazing pick and then i've fallen apart since but uh there's that's the cool thing right now is with all fc cincinnati's draws no one's picking the draws so those weeks are basically dead so it's still anyone's game so sign up and and go over to uh, our patreon if that interests you thanks for listening Uh, we appreciate you stopping by tonight we'll keep it nice and easy an hour on the dot great timing everybody and we'll see you next week